unwise people. Forgive us for wasting time. Forgive us when we fail to understand your will. Forgive us our distraction with the world around us. Forgive us our commitment to these distractions. We seek to draw our strength from your bread of heaven. Make us wise in what we say and what we do. Amen. So be careful to live your life wisely, not foolishly, Take advantage of every opportunity, because these are evil times. Because of this, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the Spirit in the following ways. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter five begins with these words of instruction. Therefore, imitate God like dearly loved children. Live your life with love, following the example of Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Paul then goes on to offer a comparison between how the world lives and how the church is supposed to be living. The church should be made up of children of light, that's us, rather than children of disobedience. As such, the church should produce fruit of the light, which is interesting. Doesn't all fruit grow in the light? Maybe not mushrooms, but I don't think mushrooms are fruit. Or all that is good and right and true. That's a tall order to be about the business of producing all that is good and right and true. No wonder we need so many chaos coordinators or volunteers at Marquette Hope. Instead of being drunk on wine, Paul suggests try being filled with the spirit. In the context of Paul's entire letter to the Ephesians, our passage today is in the middle of the second half, which offers a lot of clear direction about how we should and shouldn't be living our lives. God has been at work, tearing down barriers, dividing walls, bringing the Gentiles into the body of Christ, so that in Christ there's one inclusive universal church. Can you imagine? We strive to understand ourselves as part of something that big, but we also spend so much of our time highlighting our differences. Paul's vision for a universal and unified church is ever before us. Even though we've been fighting since Paul's time about whose church is the place where God lives, somehow our differences seem to be more interesting to us than our similarities. 
Paul makes it clear, though, that unity and peace are the goals, that our behavior should be designed to bring about the calling to these goals, these standards, if you will. They should result in changed lives, possibly even lives that look different than the lives of everybody else. Although the church is universal, meaning open to all, the church still exists in a present darkness, and don't we know it? Clearly something is not going as envisioned and designed because here we are in our fragmented state, in our brokenness, somehow trying to make our way forward in our culture of violence and racism and cruel judgment of one another. Collecting our fruit of darkness, however you imagine that, rather than the fruit of light. So what are we supposed to do about it? We are supposed to adhere to a wise and vigilant faithfulness. Like the members of the church at Ephesus before us, we should be careful to live our lives wisely, not foolishly. But it's much too late for that. So what should we do now? We have a lot of wisdom we could be drawing on. Like it would be wise to live as we are taught to live. Wise to look to the wisdom writings of the Old Testament that offer such clarity and understanding. Wisdom, by the way, the gender of wisdom when it's given is almost always female. I just thought I would mention that. Wisdom is expansive. The more we understand, the larger our love and our world and our scope become. Expansive wisdom should be sought, should be accepted, wherever and however we can find it and accept it. That sounds easy. Get up every day and seek wisdom however we can. Maybe collect it up like in a basket as we go through our days. Our granddaughter Isabella was the flower girl at David and Lexi's wedding and had a basket um, in which to hold petals until they were spread out. She practiced and practiced and practiced that. For Christian people, Jesus is the true wisdom of God, contrasting the foolishness of the world, contrasting all those things that on the surface may seem wise, but with further examination turn out to be false. It turns out that choosing a life that operates with wisdom as a compass isn't easy. Verse 17 says, don't be ignorant, but understand God's will, God's will for the world, God's will for our own lives and behavior. Again, one of the main points in Paul's letter to the Ephesians is that the foundation for how we live can be understood from and built out of what Jesus taught. God sent Jesus to teach us where our energy and focus and behavior needs to be. Bad behavior, warns Paul, using the Greek word asotia, causes an abandoned or destructive life. Other translations use words like debauchery or depravity to describe this cheapened life. Instead of this life, as the message translation puts it, we are to wake up from our sleep, climb out of our coffins, and turn to Christ who will show us the light. The wisdom of the Holy Spirit, which has both formed the Christian community and empowered these spirit-filled lives, is the key. When we are one with the Spirit or filled with the Spirit, then the Spirit is able to produce in us all that is good and right and true, those fruits of the light. So in this understanding, we are fertile soil into which good things can grow if we hold and keep ourselves for this purpose, collectively and individually, in our worship life together, in community, in remembering to be thankful at all times for everything. Remember, Ephesians is one of the letters Paul wrote while he was in prison, and yet he was so thankful. It is the spirit that knits us together and forms this connection. The lives we live, our worship together, our attitude of thankfulness at all times and all places. The spirit is more than we expect in our individual and collective lives. It is expansive, more diverse, more present, more capable, more active, more powerful. 
One commentator writes, worship is a natural consequence of who we are as the unified body of Christ. I like that concept of worship as a consequence, not like if you get in trouble, you're going to have to go to church on Sunday, but because we are the unified body of Christ, worship is the logical thing that happens next. Perhaps you've heard a preachy, hypocritical sermon on this passage in the past about how we're called to walk this razor-thin line between being in the world and of it. The point is that we're called to live a life that allows others to experience Jesus through us. That isn't easy, and some days are better than others. So we strive toward this life of worship, this life of transparent beauty in the Spirit. We do our best to make tough choices that are good choices. We do all of this, and as a result, and above all, we let worship be the consequence of who we are as the unified body of Jesus Christ. We hope you're enjoying Pod Church. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and be notified each time there's a new video. To learn more about everything that's happening in and around Marquette Hope, check out our Facebook page. You can also get our newsletter on Facebook as well. Church is the weekly online worship of Marquette Hope, a United Methodist faith community located in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Find us at facebook.com slash mqthope, mqthope.com, and on 